Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining. Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you? Fine. Okay, very nice. Thank you for joining. We're going to start in a few minutes. Um, well, let me turn off time. I'm missing a couple of seconds. I will pass the dinner first. Please, let me tell me up. And as soon as you listen to your names, stay present, please. Okay, here we go. Dr. Moncada. Maria Veronica. Present, teacher. Here. Edith Janet, Francis Castillo, Alexis, Ana Maria Wesson, present, present teacher. Here, thank you. Miss Janet Saragui, present teacher. Julia Gamnestro. Julia Gamnestro. Daniel Jeremías. Ruth Elizabeth. Present teacher. Okay. Milagro. Present. Muy bien. Please. Present teacher. Thank you, Luis. Walter. Jose Bismar. Sonia Maldonado. Present teacher. Sonia. Sonia. Jaime Humberto. Zulma. Present teacher. Thanks. Gloria. Heidi, Victor, Gilma, Gilma, Jocelyn, Erika Yesenia, Gilma. Present, present teacher. Okay, thank you. Yerna. Verónica Milagro. Verónica Milagro. Carlos Chinchilla. Present. Thank you. Erika Marisol. Marta Stephanie. Carolina Márquez. Present teacher. Okay, well, I was present in attendance, please. The, I mentioned your name and you already joined us. Please let me know. Okay, welcome one more time, like I said before. Good evening, it's nice meeting you. This is class number 10. Okay, I hope every, everybody is fine. We are starting. Okay, I will mention some people that I can see now. Okay, Edith, thank you for joining Edith. I can see Walter. Walter, good evening. Thank you, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Uh, somebody else? Jaime, hello. See you, Jaime. Okay, Jaime, hello. Present. Good evening, thank you. Erika Marisol, good evening. Present, teacher. Oh, no, está pasando lista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just see marcando los que los que se acaban de unir. Yeah, thank okay, you. Teacher. Teacher, disculpe, me pasó lista, es que tenía problemas ahí con la conexión y no le escuchaba nada y no sé si le dije. Pero... María, sí, sí. Ana María Hueso. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Uh, somebody else? Welcome, welcome. Good evening. Let me see. Yo, teacher. Yes, Bonilla, yeah. I already mentioned your name and sí. you're in the list. Thank you. 
Let me see, Jessica Sio, hello, welcome. Good evening, teacher, present. Good evening, thank you, how are you? Teacher, disculpe, a mí me pasó lista. Ana Janet. Sí. Sí. Yeah. Bye bye, gracias. Thank you. Okay, let me let me check again. Let me check. I can see another participant. Oh, Erika Jesenia, hello, welcome. Good evening. Let me see who else. Well, I think now. Yeah, everybody, some of you are here, right? Most of you are here, sorry. Yeah, we're missing some participants. We're gonna wait for them. We're going to begin, everybody. You ready? Ready for today? Yes. Evening? Okay. Very good. Just like, give me a second. I'm checking the chat. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, can you see the presentation? Yes. Vamos a ver la presentación. Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. All right. Yes, well, this is teacher. this is class. Thank you. This is class number ten. Everybody, today is Thursday, July twentieth. Um, this is the, the, the topic for today. Simple past statements with regular verbs. Okay. Um, before to continue, I just want to point out some things, as you know, about the module and the platform specifically. Uh, as you can see, you can notice, uh, you know, early, right? Early afternoon. Um, the authorities from Electro Operativo, they send some information about the platform, right? And the module. Right. And as you know, today we we finish with the week, right? And next week will be off. We're gonna have a week off because of vacation, right? No olvidemos que la próxima semana es hacemos la pausa, verdad? Ese día y la próxima semana, pues, por vacación, obviamente, vamos a tener esa pausa académica. ¿verdad? Es que siempre recordarles, al igual que son vacación Vamos a, a continuar, ¿verdad? Falta. Bueno, va a ser falta una semana, por decir así, una semana y media. Eh, voy a regresar. Son lunes 9 de agosto, ¿verdad? Terminamos con la semana 3, la sección 4. Bueno, pues que el martes terminamos las, la semana 3. Y pues continuamos el miércoles con la semana 4, que sería la última. Es que. Eh, siempre recordarles, ¿verdad? Siempre motivarlos, animarlos a, a seguir, ¿verdad? Eh, practicando, seguir aprendiendo mucho más. Cualquier cosa, estamos en la orden. Eh, yo voy a estar disponible. Cualquier cosa, la próxima semana. Eh, si ustedes solo me, me contactan, o sea, por grupo, un personal, y pues claro, no me pasa. Un gusto ser de ayuda. Yeah, no <risa> Sí, sí. <risa> sí, 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 no se recorre. Claro que sí. Tal vez. Eh, Teacher. Dígame. ¿cu ¿Cuándo es que regresamos a clase, perdón? El 9 de agosto. 9 de agosto. 9, 9. Sí, gracias. Sí. Tomamos nota. Eh, ahora hacemos la pausa, ahora ese día terminamos. Los viernes, como ustedes saben, son, son libres. Vamos de lunes a jueves. Eh, y regresamos hasta el próximo lunes con el 9 de agosto. Seguimos con nuestras actividades, con nuestras clases, y pues nuevamente recuerden seguir avanzando si nos hemos quedado atrás eh, por diversas circunstancias, por diversas situaciones, eh, pero hay que seguir, hay que seguir y completar las situaciones que se han estipulado. ¿verdad? Por lo menos tenemos que tener completado hasta la sección 4. 
que se diga. Eh, obviamente aprovechamos ya en el fin de semana y la próxima semana para el, luego, bueno, regresemos el próximo lunes, ya hayamos completado casi todo y no haya ningún inconveniente. Es que te consulta, igual repito, estamos en siempre disponibles. O sea, la aplicación, no gusta. No gusta. Eh, o sea, si hay preguntas con respecto a, o dudas, algún comentario con respecto a la reforma, algún ejercicio, etc. Teacher. Dígame. Eh, dice que no escuché muy bien porque creo que se, se me escuchaba cortado, pero creo que a mí. Este, usted dijo que entramos el 9 de agosto, ¿verdad? Pero sí. entramos ya a terminar lo de la sección 4. Sí, porque... Ya eh, lo es... último... Sí, eh, perdón, ese, ese día, recuerden que estamos en la semana 3, son cuatro semanas. Son cuatro semanas y son cinco secciones de la plataforma. Claro, la verdad. Así es que eh, ayer iniciamos con la semana 3. Ahora seguimos con la clase 2, por decirlo así. Pero después de vacaciones seguimos con la clase 3 y clase 4 de la semana 3. El miércoles de la próxima semana eh, iniciamos con la última semana. Ya, pues, finalizamos la sección 5 de la plataforma. Ok, mire, la otra es que ahora me mandaron un mensaje de parte de, de ahí, ¿verdad? De ustedes. Y decía de que tenía que trabajar la sección 1 y 2. No sé si a ellos no les aparece que he trabajado o, o cómo. Claro, claro, no se preocupe. Eh, estaba revisando eso eh, ahora por la tarde, ¿verdad? Esa inquietud que tenían... Algunos, ¿verdad? Claro, no, no se preocupe, si hemos estado trabajando, hemos ido al día, etc. Pues incluso hemos terminado, no se preocupe. Ese mensaje, por lo general, se les envía a todos para hacerles el, el recordatorio. Y claro que ellos llevan el control. Las autoridades de crédito educativo eh, los que se encargan de, de revisar todo, ¿verdad? El, el, su, su progreso, etc. Ellos llevan todo el control. Es que en caso de que les haga falta algún ejercicio o alguna sección, ellos se van a contactar con ustedes principalmente. Pero si reciben esos mensajes, eh, no se preocupen. Si hemos avanzado y si vemos que hemos completado o sea, la sección, o todo posiblemente no hay que preocuparse. Porque ese okay. mensaje se les, se les envía a todos. Ah, ok. Está bien, entonces. Gracias. Igual, si ustedes creen que, no sé, eh, desean consultar, lo pueden hacer directamente con, con alguna persona de inglés. Las personas que les, les proporcionan, ¿verdad?, el soporte, el soporte técnico. Es que no se preocupe. Eh, no sé si alguien más, por cierto, eh, Good evening, Alexis, Daniel Jeremías, Luis, Lilian, Hello, Marta. Presente. Good evening, thank you. Let me see. Who else? ¿Qué más son hace poquito? Además de los que mencioné. Alexis, Daniel, Marta, and William. Creo que es solamente ellos. ¿Se me ha escapado alguien más? Me, me, me confirmo, por favor. No sé si hay más preguntas o dudas o algún comentario. Please. Sí, bueno, alguien lo mencionaba, Edith, alguien lo mencionaba ahora en el grupo, probablemente sea así, ¿verdad? Como lo mencionaba alguien en el grupo. Eh, lo, 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 lo toman como aleatoriamente. Aleatoriamente o probablemente todos recibamos ese mensaje. Eh, no sé, que les hace falta alguna sección, etc. Eh, eso es porque se les da seguimiento a todos. Se les da seguimiento a todos de, y se manda ese mensaje por cualquier cosa, si alguien se ha atrasado, ¿verdad? Pues es recordatorio y para que él o ella pues pueda seguir avanzando para su concepción. Pero repito, si hemos completado todo, hasta la sección o toda la plataforma, en concepción, no hay de qué preocuparse. Si les hace falta algún ejercicio, por ejemplo, se les va a notificar. Pero pues, digamos un ejercicio, realmente se les pasó, ¿no? Pero se les va a notificar. No se preocupen. No sé si hay más dudas, preguntas, o no iniciamos. ¿No? 
Okay, this is class number 10, everybody. The, uh, the topic for today, like I said before, is simple past statements with regular verbs. All right, we're gonna focus on that today. Thank you, Jose. Good evening, welcome. How are you? Very smart. Thank you. Let me check again. Let me check again. See, Veronica Milagro, good evening too. Thank you for joining. Okay. Now, yeah, let's begin. Let's get started with the class. This is class number 10. The topic for today, I repeat, is simple plus statements with regular verbs. Over now. Let's start with the use of the simple past, the simple past tense. When do we use the simple past tense? We use it to indicate an action which is completed at a definite time in the past. Okay? So this is a completed event, this is a completed action in the past. That's the way we use simple past. Okay? And let me clarify. Let me clarify because we have. When we talk about the simple past tense, eh, we know that we have two forms talking about the verbs. We have regular and irregular verbs. Those are the two forms that we have with a simple past. We need to be careful. Today, we're going to focus on the regular verbs. We're going to talk about regular verbs today, only regular verbs. All right, so this will be the focus for today. Okay. Thank you, Veronica. Welcome. Okay, regular verbs. Remember, simple past tense is used to indicate an action, an event which is completed in the past. These are the ways we structure the simple pass in the affirmative, negative, and we have questions, right? What we have to do here, and first, like I said before, we're going to focus on the regular verbs, regular verbs. Listen, when you have a regular verb in the simple pass, you need to know that we use different endings in the verbs. The verb in base form, the verb in base form in the simple past, we change it. We use endings. These endings, we use the ed or ied, depending on the verb, right? Las terminaciones que se les agregan los verbos. Esas son las terminaciones. The, ed, or ied, right? Okay. Talking about the affirmative form, this is the way we structure the affirmative form. We use a subject, we use the verb, the verb is in the past form. So in this case, because we're talking about regular verbs, we include D, ED, or ID, depending on the verb. Subject, the verb, this one is in the past form. So we change it, we include the, the sorry, the, or can be ID. And at the end, we finish with a compliment. This is in the affirmative form. And you can say, I watched a movie last night. Subject. This is the verb, this is in the simple, in the past form, sorry. And this is the complement. As you notice, the verb is different because you modify the verb. And the verb in the base form is watch. But in the past form, you add ed, was, was. And the pronunciation is different. We need to make emphasis on the pronunciation in the simple form. Right? Watch. Watch. In the past form, you say watched. Watched. 
plus. Okay. That's a way you change the verbs. In this case, we're focusing on regular verbs. Another example. He worked late yesterday. He worked late yesterday. That is a company. And again, we're using ED. He worked. He worked late yesterday. Okay. Another example. We can say she studied Japanese last year. So here we're having completed actions in the past. He studied. Japanese last year, that is a component. So now we have this form. Okay? That's the way. This is an affirmative. This is an affirmative. And we always, we always change the verb in the affirmative form. Looking about simple class. We include Whatever of these endings, D, ED, or ID, of course, depending on the verb. Right? Depending on the verb. What about if you talk about the negative form? In the negative form, is different, so you have to be careful. The negative form, we we focus with this structure, we focus on this structure, right? But the difference is that after the subject, you include the auxiliary. Did not, but you can use a contraction, did it. Plus, the verb now, it is not in the past form. The verb is in the past form. So you don't change it. You, you don't modify the verb. So now the verb is in the, in the base form. And at the end, you have a complement. Remember, did not equals an auxiliary. An auxiliary. And this is a negative. Or you can use the contraction. The contraction is didn't. didn't. Okay, now we can say, I'm going to focus on this example. So you can notice the difference. I didn't watch a movie last night. Let's identify the parts of the sentence. But this is the way. And as you can see, the verb is in base form. So you cannot, you don't say, you don't write this. Why? Because you have the auxiliary. The auxiliary. Didn't. So it tell us, it tell us that this is simple pass. That is auxiliary. In negative, in past form. The simple past did not. Okay, of course, in the simple person, you know that is don't or doesn't, right? Don't or doesn't. But that is different. That is simple present. So in the simple past, you use didn't. The other example was he worked late yesterday. The negative form, he didn't work late yesterday. So this is a way. And again, the verb is in the base form. Word. Word. Why? Because we have the children. In the last one, we studied Japanese last year. He didn't study Japanese year. See the difference. See the difference in the affirmative form and the negative. So now again, again the verb is in base form. Study. Okay. So this is affirmative and negative form in the simple class. And remember, we're talking about regular verbs now. 
In the following classes, we're going to talk about irregular verbs. Irregular. Right now, just regular, okay? Just regular verbs. All right, so I was wondering if you have any questions right here with the affirmative and negative part. Let me know, please. Preguntas? Any doubts, comments, something that is not clear for you? It's okay. It's okay? Yes. It's okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. That is the affirmative and that is the negative form. And then I'm going to focus on the verbs, on the verb. When we talk about regular verbs, I'm going to explain something that, you know, you need to have in mind, right? Right now we're expressing, we're identifying the formulas. Let's go with the last one, which is questions. With questions, we're going to talk about just no questions. With questions, the auxiliary is the it. This is the auxiliary verb. And we begin with the it plus subject plus a verb. The verb is in the base form. Then we have a complement and we finish with a question mark. So now you can say, do you, do you watch a movie last night? See the difference again? With negative and questions, we use the verb in the base form. Look. Look. Do you watch a movie last night? And we get short answers. Your answers. We can say yes, I did, or no, I didn't. That's the way. With the simple pass, it, it, it is easier to use it because with all the forms, with all the pronouns, with all the subjects, it's the same. It is not with the it, it is not similar to the simple present, right? With the simple present, you use do or does, do or does, and it's because of the third person singular, right? He, she, or it. In the simple pass, with all the subjects, it's the same. So, for example, you can say, "Did you work?" Late yesterday. So as you can see, he is a third person singular. So you don't say like in the simple present, right? Does does he? Oh, no. In this case, we use the same auxiliary for all the subjects, all the pronouns. You were late yesterday. Yes, he did. No, he did. Okay. And another example, the date go to the party. I would say um, the day before yesterday. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Okay, so look this, look at this. The verb is in the base form, go. Work. So they are in the base form. We don't change them. We change the verse in the affirmative form, only in the affirmative. Okay? This is the way we construct questions with a simple class. Right? Any questions over here, guys? Let me know. Tengo solo una pregunta. Yeah, sorry. Este, y, y cu ¿cuáles son las reglas para saber si agregar IED, ED o D? Let me explain that, no worries. Let me explain that. But I want to know first if you have any questions about the structures, the formulas. In the affirmative, negative, and questions. And questions. No, no doubts. Preguntas, no dudas.
¿Te preguntas? ¿No? ¿Hola? ¿Everything is okay? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay, thank you. Moving on, let's talk about the birds now. Let's focus on the birds. Okay. Listen. We're talking about regular birds, only regular right now. Regular. Remember, when we use regular birds, we include the endings as terminaciones. D, E, D, or I, E, D. And we have the following birds. Right? Listen. When you talk about the verbs, we have different forms. Specifically, we have three forms. Three forms. The present form, the infinitive form, infinitive, past form, and the past principle. Right now, we're going to focus just on the present, infinitive, and the past form. Because these are the, the, the verbs that we have to use, right? In the simple tense. Okay, these are the verbs in the present form. They, they are in the base form, right? They are in the base form. And we have some rules. We have some rules. Let me show you. Okay, with most of the verse, most of the verse, uh, we add, we add ed, ed, right? Like watch, work, listen. Another one. Here we have visit. With most of the verbs, we include ed. So we say wash, worked, worked, listened, listened, and visited. Visited. As you can notice, we include ed with most of the verbs. That can be the first rule, right? The first rule. Another rule, second rule, uh, when verbs finish and consonant plus white, we uh, omit or eliminate the white, the white, and add IED, IED. For example, study, carry, fry, settle. But as you can know, as you can notice, this verse finish with consonant Y. Consonant Y. Consonant Y. So what we do is this: we eliminate, we omit the Y, and we add I E D. So we say now, we say, study it, carry it, pride, pride. So we change we like this. That is the way. That is that is the second rule. That's the second rule. So far, is it good? Yes. So far, so good, teacher. Okay. Let me give you another rule. So it's similar to this one. Similar to this one. When verse finish, now the opposite. Vowel. Plus white, 
but we keep the, 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 the white and we include in these cases, we include ED, ED. For example, play, enjoy, also the most common. So now, as you can see, we have a vowel and we have a white. Vocal y la consonante griega. Vowel and white. So it's different. In the previous one was consonant plus white. Consonant plus white. In this case, it's vowel plus white. So we don't omit the Y. We keep it. It includes just ED. That's why we say played, played, enjoyed, enjoyed. So we keep the white. We include just ED. ED. Okay. And the last one. Another rule is that when verse finish and consonant vowel consonant we double the last letter and add ed. So when we have this, we have this consonant vowel consonant. We include, we double the last letter, the last consonant specifically, and we include ed. For example, for example, we have the stop, plan. Okay, those are the most common. Here, what we do is this, look, stop, stop, planned, planned. So we double the last letter and we include ED. Double P, double M, and we include ED. That's the way you identify the verbs. The verbs, the regular verbs is considered regular. Because we include, so we add D, E, D, or K, E, D. Okay. There is another one, which is when the verb finish, when the verbs finish with E, we include just D, like exercise. Like exercise. This verb finish with E, with the letter E. In this case, we include just D. But that's easy. That's easy to know it. That's easy to know. So we include just the. Here we have some examples. Watch. Listen, listen to me because the pronunciation is different. Watch, watched, watch. Exercise, exercise. Study, study it. Study, study it. Stay, stay, stayed, stayed. Shop, 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 shop. Word, 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 word. Play, play, played, played, played. Visit, visited, 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 visit. Visit, visited, visited. Okay, the pronunciation of the the verse in the past form is different. Why? Why is different? It's because we have some sounds. In the past form, we have some sounds. We have a T sound. We have a D sound, and we have an ID sound. Okay. For example, when we have a T sound, just because we had the verb word, word, word. In the past form, in the past form, you say word, 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 word. 
So we have a DSL. It's like you have this word, word, word. So that's why it's a DSL. That is a DSL. This sound can be the verb play, play, play. So we include ed. That's more, and you say play it, play it, play it, play it. But the verb finishes with a D sound, play it, play it. And the other one is visit it, visit it. I'm sorry, visit. That is in the base form, visit. But if you include ed, visit it, visit it, visit it. So you have this. Visit it, visit it. Okay, in this case, played, played, played. Okay, so that's why the verse in the simple past change. They are pronounced in a different way. Okay, any questions over here? Perdón, oh. pero este en la pronunciación en lo que acaba de explicar, cuando yo identifique el verbo, ¿cómo voy a saber yo la entonación que le tengo que dar? Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm going to play a video. I have a video for this. I, I, I have prepared this video for this class. I'm going to show you, and I need you to take notes. Please pay attention to the speaker. I have a video. I'm going to give you some details or some verbs that you have to have in mind when you construct it as well. Let me look for the video and I'm going to play it for you so we can identify the verse in, this, in the past form. Same. Okay, I need you to pay attention to this video because here you will identify how to pronounce those verse in the simple pass. Okay, here we go. Please pay attention to the video and take notes. Take notes. Right now. Okay, please let me know if you can listen to the, you can listen to the video and you can watch it, right? You can watch. This is about regular verbs. We're going to identify how we pronounce these regular verbs. Now, the word sounds that I gave you, right? At this sound, at this sound, and I this. Can you listen to the, can you watch the video and listen to it? Let's go down. Se escucha recortado, teacher. No, se escucha bien. No, no. Se escucha bien. ¿Podemos escuchar? ¿Sí? Sí, se escucha. Yes. Okay, okay. Please, pay attention to the video. Let's go. Regular verbs played, walked, decided. When thinking about the pronunciation of the past tense of regular verbs, think about Edward Scissorhands. Ed is short for Edward. Unfortunately, Ed does not exist in the pronunciation of any of the past tense of regular verbs. Sorry, Ed. Instead, the ED ending in regular verbs is pronounced in one of three ways D, T, or it, the pronunciation is used for regular verbs that end with a voiced sound. Voiced sounds are sounds that are made in the throat and make your throat vibrate. If you put your hand on your throat and make these sounds, you will feel your throat vibrate. B, E, G, I, J, L, M, N, R, Th, U, V, W, Z, Y. So, describe becomes described. Agree simply becomes agreed. Belong becomes belonged. Identify becomes identified. Change becomes changed.
Travel becomes traveled. Welcome becomes welcomed. Design becomes designed. Answer becomes answered. Breathe becomes breathed. Continue becomes continued. Improve becomes improved. Follow becomes followed. Amuse becomes amused. Play becomes played. So in summary, if you have a regular verb that ends with a voiced sound, in terms of pronunciation, simply don't pronounce the E. If a regular verb ends with an unvoiced sound, a sound that is made at the front of your mouth, the pronunciation of that verb in the past tense will end with a T. These sounds are generally percussive sounds in a drum beat. Help becomes helped. Work becomes worked. Relax becomes relaxed. Wash becomes washed. Watch becomes watched. Froth becomes frothed. And laugh becomes laughed. The if ending for the past tense of regular verbs is only used when a verb ends with e or t. Recommend becomes recommended. Persuade, persuaded. Provide, provided. Decide. Decided. Need. Needed. And with T, start becomes started. Act. Acted. Create. Created. Participate participated. So to summarize, if the final sound of a regular verb ends with T or D, the pronunciation is id. If you would like... Okay, so that's a way, that's why uh, the verbs are pronounced differently in the past learn. Uh, you have to make emphasis on that. Of course, I'm going to send a video in the thing with Hannes just with the connectivity. Right? No worries, I'm going to send this video so you can check it out and yeah, practice with the pronunciation of these words, right? So that's why, like I said before, they are pronounced differently, okay? <clears throat> so for the word, but when you pronounce sound and a voice sound, so it means that that sound, it is made at the front of your mouth, right? Word, 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 word. Look at my mouth, word, word, word. Word. If you have a this sound, so you have a voice sound. So you can talk with your, your throat, played, played, played. So your 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 throat vibrates, vibrates, right? Played, 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 played. So that is a voice sound. Played, played, so we have a played, this sound in this case. Played, played. 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 And with the letters, the verse. How about this sound or this sound? Like this it. This it. So this one finish, finishes with T. So that's why you include a ID sound. Visited. Visited. That is in the past one. Okay? So I will send you the video 
in the WhatsApp group so you can continue practicing and you can locate or you can identify uh, the verbs, right? Depending on the sounds. Okay. Any questions? Profe, lo molesto. Tell me, tell me. Eh, ¿Cree que puede poner el cuadro que usted hizo y a lo último? Sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. Ajá, ese, pero lo último, ya lo último. Yeah. Es, ese, sure. ese, ese. Thank yo, you. Yeah, yeah, yo lo no mismo works. le voy a pedir, pero no sé si me hace el favor de, de expandir el, el documento para poderle tomar screenshot. Sure. De manera que se vean toda la, la regla. De maximizar la ventana del documento. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Well, let me give you some examples. Okay. So here we have some examples in the affirmative form. I played a computer game. You studied math. You watched a talk show. You wanted to stay home. We cooked Italian food. I played a computer game. You studied math. You watched a show. She wanted to stay home. We cooked Italian food. That is in the affirmative. Like I said before, in affirmative, we change the verbs. We include those endings. D, E, D, or I, E, D. In the negative form, it's simple. It's simple because we keep the verbs in the base form. Los verbos están en forma base, en negativo. Solo en afirmativo es que los cambiamos. I didn't play chess. Listen to the difference. Listen to the difference. I didn't play, I didn't play chess. You didn't study English. He didn't watch the news. He didn't want to go out. We didn't cook Chinese food. We didn't cook Chinese food. So listen to the difference. So we make emphasis on the verse and we change them in the past form because yeah, the pronunciation is different. Okay. This is the way. Those are the ways we use in the simple past. So next class, well, they are different because they have different classifications. Next class, no worries. So we're going to go step by step. Okay. Any doubts over here? So far so good? No? No teacher. No teacher. Thanks, thanks. Okay, continue. Yo Let's go to the last part. Oh, tell me, tell me. Este, en, la, en la plataforma, en uno de los ejercicios, quería preguntarle por qué se mantiene el, el, específicamente en la parte 4, en, en la parte 4, en el ejercicio 2, creo que, que este, está el, el, este, el que tendríamos que utilizar, que supuestamente lo tenemos que pasar a, a, a pasado, ¿verdad? Valga la redundancia. Es, pero dice speak y este eh, uno dice red, pero o sea, ¿por qué? le quería preguntar por qué a uno se les agrega el ED a la hora de responder y por qué otros se mantienen. Creo que es, es el, el siguiente donde aparece mm. que son cuatro. 4.9. Uh -huh. Ajá. Okay. Son cuatro y, y este. Mm, sí, esos son, creo. Quiero ver. Tenemos dos Hay uno que dice, ajá. Ese, ese, son como cuatro, creo, ¿verdad? Sí, tenemos, quiero ver, seis son. Y, es, ajá, entonces yo le quería preguntar por qué en algunos se mantiene el, el, el verbo igual y por qué, porque así lo acepta la, la plataforma y por qué en otros se le tiene que agregar el ED. 
Okay. Esa es mi pregunta, yeah, ¿por qué uno se mantiene? Eh, okay, okay, yeah. It's because over here we have um, the two forms. We have regular and we have irregular. For example, over here, yes, I did. I and the verb is have. Have is an irregular verb, irregular. So it's different. When we use irregular verbs, we don't include ed, d, or ied. So they have different classifications. For example, have, the past form is have, had. Because it's irregular, irregular. So here in exercise 4.9, we have a combination of them, regular and irregular. So that's why in this case, the verb changes because it's irregular. With irregulars, we don't use D, E, D, or I, E, D. Okay? The same with go. Go is irregular. It is not regular. So we don't include E, D because it's a simple word. This is irregular and the past form is went. I went to the day so you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Next class, we're going to talk about irregular verbs. Irregular. Okay. First, I wanted to uh, I wanted to identify the verse irregular irregular verbs, right? First, uh, when we include D, E, D, or I, D, because irregulars are different. Okay. We have some some here that they are regular. For example, this one. No, I didn't. I stayed. This is regular with ED. Okay. So you have a combination of the two forms. Hay una teacher, combinación. Pero, este, perdone, teacher. Yo lo que sí no, no entiendo ahí es que cómo voy a identificar cuando es un verbo regular y cuando es un irregular, porque en la, cuando dice hay. Y entre paréntesis está I go, ¿verdad? To the pitch a lot, pero ¿cómo sé yo cuando tengo que poner when? ¿Cómo sé que es este un verbo irregular? La próxima clase vamos a ver los verbos irregulares. Ahí vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Mi recomendación para todos es empezar a, a plantearse verbos, es decir, poco a poco, los más comunes, empezamos los más comunes, poco a poco, no todos de un solo en cuanto a regulares e irregulares. Más que todo con, la, con el simple class. Es que debemos de iniciar a, a probablemente memorizar algunos, pero ustedes verán que en el camino, cuando ustedes vayan practicando mucho más, eh, les recomiendo que cuando estamos aprendiendo algún verbo, en especial verbos regulares e irregulares, eh, practicamos con oraciones en pasado para que se nos vayan quedando los, los verbos. Es muy bueno memorizarlos porque ya se le queda uno, que ese es irregular. Esa es la recomendación. Eh, la próxima clase yo les voy a dar algunos verbos irregulares, los más comunes. Empezamos por ahí, por los más comunes, eh, a practicarlos, ¿verdad? A estudiarlos, a aprenderlos. Y lo, lo más recomendable sería eso, utilizar los verbos en oraciones, pequeños ejemplos, para que a ustedes les vaya quedando los verbos. Para saber, ok, ese es irregular, ese es irregular. Esa es mi recomendación. Ahorita solo hemos visto los regulares, porque se les agrega solo D, E, D o I, E, D. Son los regulares. Acá les estaba mostrando los, los más comunes, podría decir. Watch. Exercise, study, stay, shop, work, play, visit. Son verbos comunes. Es que eso es lo que les recomiendo. Se les recomiendo. Thank you, teacher. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Porque casi hay una combinación, en ese ejercicio hay una combinación de ambos, regulares e irregulares. En la forma pasada se utilizan regulares e irregulares y se cambian así. Al menos los regulares se, se hacen cambios. Con los irregulares, les mencionaba, son diferentes clasificaciones o categorías. En eso nos, con los verbos irregulares no agregamos ED, D o IED. Esos son diferentes. Por eso les recomiendo que empezamos a estudiarlos, sus formas. Con ejemplos, si creamos ejemplos, eso sería lo mejor para que ustedes se les queden. O memorizarlos, porque las formas de los irregulares son diferentes. Vamos a ver la próxima clase.
Igual, si necesitan ayuda, estamos a la orden. Pero si les puedo compartir algunos verbos comunes para que ustedes los empiecen a practicar y, y puedan hacer sus propios ejemplos en pasado, ¿verdad? En pasado. ¿Ok? Listen, eh, we're going to go to the last part. I just want to say something uh, with the simple pass. Uh, when we use a simple pass, we tend to have some time expressions. Time expressions for simple pass. For example, yesterday, last year, last night, last Saturday, we can say the day before yesterday. We tend to use the expression ago. For example, we can say five years ago. We can say 10 minutes ago. We can use in 1994, etc. So those are time expressions for the simple past. So we can include them in the sentences and they help us to recognize but that is a past statement, for example. So these are clue words. These are keywords. Estas son palabras claves. Expresiones de tiempo para el pasado. Si las vemos en algún, en algún ejemplo, ok, that is simple words. Eso nos ayuda a identificar. O nos ayuda a hablar acerca del pasado. Ok. Very good. Any questions? No question, teacher. Thank you. Thanks. Fine, teacher. Very good, very good. Listen, uh, we're going to go to the last part. I think I'm going to share this in the chat. So you can have it. I'm going to go to the last part because it's time. And I'm going to assign you a, an extra practice or homework. What I wanted to do in your notebooks, I need you to follow these examples and I need you to write at least three similar examples by using the simple past tense with the regular verbs and the verbs shown in the box. For example, I watched a movie on Saturday. I didn't exercise on Saturday. My father worked last Sunday. He didn't stay home. Okay, so you can write, you can follow these examples, and I need to write at least three similar examples. You have to use a simple past and regular verbs, regular verbs. So I need you to use these verbs, these ones, use these verbs and construct your three sentences. Okay, so please take a screenshot. Tenemos una captura de esos de esos verbos por la tabla específicamente. Quiero que sigamos esos verbos para escribir las oraciones. Empecemos practicando con esos verbos que son regulares para hacer nuestros, nuestros propios ejemplos. Llevamos esos verbos, claro que sí. Vamos a captura. Ya tomo la captura. And we're going to take a screenshot. Yeah, sorry. Yes, teacher. Okay, and we're going to take a screenshot of the, the examples. I need you to follow these examples. I watched a movie on Saturday. I didn't exercise on Saturday. My father worked last Sunday. He didn't stay home. Okay, so you have to write three similar examples with a simple past and with regular verbs. Listen, I will ask you, I will request you, as soon as you finish with your examples, I want you to share your examples in the WhatsApp group. We're going to check your examples, both your examples, and yeah, I will help you, okay? I will help you. Eh, Les va a quedar eso como práctica, como una tarea, por favor. Eh, les voy a pedir también que si pueden compartir sus ejemplos en el chat, en el grupo WhatsApp, específicamente para que sus compañeros vean sus ejemplos, comparemos, al mismo tiempo yo voy a estar chequeando ejercicios, ayudarles. Es que tomamos una captura de esos ejemplos, no sé si ya la tomaron. 
para que podamos hacer nuestros ejemplos. Y recuerden a empezar a practicar. Con verbos regulares ahorita, los verbos más comunes. Vamos a practicar y la próxima clase, bueno, ustedes practiquen, sigan practicando. Yo sé, con verbos irregulares, la próxima clase vamos a ver eso. Verbos irregulares, vamos a ir paso a paso para que no, no se nos cuente todo. Si hay preguntas. No, teacher. No question. Ok. Well, remember, this will be a, an extra practice for you because next time we're going to start right here. Uh, please keep going, keep going during the vacation. Practice a lot uh, with exercises, with sentences. Use a regular verse and a regular verse in the simple past, of course. Write your sentences, practice a lot. If you have any questions, just let me know and I can help you. In, in there, I will see you next Monday, Monday, August 9th. Please, everybody, happy holidays. God bless you, and I'll see you today. Again, please, happy holidays. Happy holidays. I'll see you next class. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Happy holidays. See you soon. Take care.